morning, everyone. We're continuing in Galatians. Remember, I forgot to mention it yesterday. I wrote a book called Fan the Flame for discouraged pastors, leaders, Christians, about how we can get out of this diminishing, shrinking church situation we have in America. And it's not just in America. Um, so uh, you can get it by going to brooklyntabernacle.org. You get it for half price. None of the royalties go to me. The church benefits. I'm not trying to make a dollar. I'm trying to encourage someone. So please, buy a bunch of them. They even got a hoodie. Fan the flame. I'm going to wear one maybe in October so that I can give you a little taste. Um, we're reading here in Galatians. This is, I've been just told by John Ortega, that this is my 665th um, daily devotional that I've taped since the beginning of the pandemic. But you know what that means. Yeah, you're right. Tomorrow, on a Friday. It's not Friday the 13th. It's Friday 666. Guess what? It means nothing. Because we're Christians. And nobody can do voodoo, hoodoo on us or any other kind of do. We are Christians. We belong to the Lord. And we are reading now about, oh, this is good now. Paul has gone up to chapter 5, verse 13, about you're not under the law. Don't let these Johnny-come-lately Jewish teachers try to get you circumcised as if you have to become Jewish before you become Christian. Um, no, you, I shouldn't have said Johnny come lately. It's Ebenezer come lately that bring in this teaching which is going to distort your faith in Christ. Now he's saying, but don't go the other side now and use this freedom to do what? Do not use your freedom, verse 13, to indulge the flesh, Flesh, rather, serve one another humbly in love for, verse 14, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Now, he's not going back to the law because it sounds like he is, for the whole law is summed up. He's saying Christ paid the penalty and fulfilled the law for you. Now that you're a Christian, you want to live in a way pleasing to God. And remember this, that whole law with its 500 some commands is summarized by just one sentence. Love God and your neighbor as yourself. In fact, he puts it, uh, for the entire law is fulfilled in love your neighbor as yourself. Love is the fulfilling of the law. So he wants us to serve. He says, you're free now not to like, whoa, I can part. No, you're free. See, there you go. Freedom to us gives like, wow, school's out. I'm free. He's saying, now God has set you free from the tyranny of that selfish nature, the sarks, the flesh. Jim Cimbala without Christ corrupt to the core, to the core. You know, it's like a, one of the great Christians of another century said, if you see me doing anything right, no, if you see me doing anything wrong, inappropriate, wrong, sinful, selfish, that's me. If you see me helping you in any way or doing something right, it's not me, it's Christ in me. Isn't that a very humbling kind of position that God puts us in? If it's bad, it's me. If it's good, it's Christ. Ah, no wonder there's no boasting. All the glory has to go to Christ. Not only for what he did on the cross, but even now, he through the Holy Spirit is working in us so to produce the fruit that we're going to read about in a moment. So he says, love your neighbor as yourself. This fulfills everything. If you bite and devour each other, whoa, he's, who's he writing to this? Some crack dealers? Some secular humanists? No, folks in the church. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, 
or you'll be destroyed by each other. So here's the choice. We can serve one another in love as Christians, or we can give in to that sarks and start biting and devouring each other because we get upset with people. Why? Because they do something or they hold an opinion. Can you believe? Listen, I got to share this with you. I actually met some people in the last few days. They hold a different opinion than me on certain things. How dare they? Did they not know I'm the depository and the center of all wisdom and knowledge? Did they not know they're building a memorial for Jim Simbola right now in Washington, D.C.? Can you imagine? I'd like to just bite and devour them. How dare they disagree with my opinion on anything, food, politics, anything? How dare you? See? Is that not our society? Go on social media. Tell me how much serving one another in love is found there. No, no, report back to me. That's your assignment for the month of October. At the end of October, report back to me how much nice love, serving, kindness, humility you're gonna find out in this world apart from Jesus Christ working in them. And the flesh is so nasty, it can pop up anywhere. It can be in the pulpit. I'm not preaching a sermon to help people. I'm preaching to show off so people will go, oh, Pastor Simbley's amazing. See that pride? Want to draw attention to ourselves? You, you, can, you can dress in the flesh wrong and take away from the good things you're saying because you're either trying to show off and, and be an egotistical maniac or dress sensually. And now you got a double message. You're talking about God who is holy and you're, and you're giving in to those tendencies of the flesh. Show as much of your body so you, or, or be seductive and alluring so you can draw attention from the opposite sex or same sex in some cases. That flesh is always lurking. And just like the law can bring you under bondage, so can the flesh. You're not obeying the Word of God. You're not being led by the Holy Spirit and, and following Jesus. You're led by the dictates of that flesh. Listen, my dad was an alcoholic for 22 years. He couldn't pass a liquor store without going in it if his life depended on it. It's controlled. He was in chains. You couldn't see him, but trust me, he was in prison. But praise God, there's liberty and freedom when we serve Jesus Christ. See you tomorrow on Friday. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.